Good morning! Riding out solo this morning, uh, but I'm going to meet Jim down in Bradenton, Palmetto area. So that's where he lives. So he's, uh, we had this chance meeting the other day <clears throat> with Jim. Uh, um, we're all meeting at a pool site in St. Pete, but we didn't plan anything prior to that. Normally we just meet on the job site in most instances. Um, so anyway, we all showed up at the same time at Wawa. I was riding with Paul and, and Jim uh, was there. So um, it was a very uh, uh, interesting <laughs> moment because we felt the hand of God playing into what we were doing. Uh, had just showed up um, um, because we're all guided you know what I mean um, the Bible says that our, our lives are purposed out of Yah has made his purpose in our lives right out of the womb so it, you get into topics of do we really have free will uh, when Yah is forcing his hand and arranging things through his grace that all three of us met up at the Wawa in St. Pete. Um, we had no time plan that we're meeting. We had, we didn't have a conversation at all. We didn't say we're going to Wawa first. We didn't say which Wawa, anything at all. Uh, we just all ended up there. And, um, there's a Lowe's right next door, so that was uh, uh, important because I, I needed to pick up material. So, the title of this video is, Why is Israel God's chosen people? Why does the Bible say, you know, people will just like, they'll, they'll look at the Bible and say, Oh, this is uh, very destructive because one group of people believes themselves to be above all other people in the world because they're God's chosen people. And I want to change uh, the perspective on that. And that's because <coughs> these people were unique because they did something. <clears throat> because uh, Yah ordained that he was going to do something unique in all of the world, in all of uh, world history with these people in the same way he did something unique through history with his own son. Uh, because Yah wants to give markers or indicators why, um, why you should believe God. Markers in history, uh, events in history, uh, prophecy, because history is prophecy. So if you have these markers in history and you believe them, and because you believe them so much collectively as a people, those ancient historic events will be replicated on into the future. Now the thing is, those ancient historical events are number one questioned, they are regarded as phony in a materialistic world, and that even among believers, they don't believe that these things happen. They don't believe, there's a lot of believers who uh, label themselves as Christians, that they don't believe that Jesus actually was resurrected, that it's a uh, like an allegory, or that he actually did physical healing because they don't see those same physical healings in the real world. Good morning, Richard Davis. Whoop, whoop. Um, so there's a lot of Jews who, like there's a, a video on YouTube uh, at a TED Talk of a Jew explaining uh, how David defeated Goliath, but it's all secular. It's all like science. Well, he's basically giving the reason because he many Jews are uh, atheists. They created communism, Karl Marx, and and then it was financed by atheistic Jews, uh, the synagogue of Satan, uh, communism, just like capitalism, right? So with whether you're a communist or a capitalist, uh, wherever you grew up, they generally, the government is materialistic. So it, it, this TED talk had a Jew 
describing how David uh, had advantages over Goliath because uh, Goliath was this type of giant and he has a genetic defect which Andre the giant had, the, the wrestler, and because of that he couldn't see as well and he's kind of like ogrely and, and loafing and that sort of thing. And so anyway, this, this Jew gave a whole bunch of reasons that David had uh, these advantages and Goliath was not agile enough. Um, and that's how this event happened. It wasn't a miracle of God <laughs> that David took this little boy and defeated uh, Goliath, right? And this, this parable in David and Goliath is very, very important because I, I read this to my son. I've read this story of David and Goliath to my son, both of my sons, uh, 200 times. Like, Chris, when we play, I'm, da I'm Goliath and my son is David, right? So I put this in there all over the place. Uh, the reason being is, if we're going to overcome our captivity, we have to act like the Israelites. That's why they are unique. That's the reason why the Jew is a holy name. They are holy, and the Israelites are holy, because they did something unique, which no, as far as I'm seeing, a group of people, there's individuals like Richard David, Richard Davis rather, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read your comment, but I'm driving. I'm um, sorry. So uh, once I get a red light, I'll, uh, I'll duck down. So my point is, is that <clears throat> like Richard Davis, he suffers to try to do everything he can to remove himself from control by Babylon in the same way that John the Baptist did because he was, uh, you know, getting closer and closer to nature, like Feast of Tents is coming up. So Yah wants a people who are, who are completely, they're willing, they're eager, they want to completely divorce the ways of the world. Think of like the Amish, right, or the American Indian, where they're not dependent on a, a supply chain of food that comes from China, right? that comes from thousands of miles away. It's a completely, uh, complete <clears throat> rebellion to the garden. Think of the garden and the way we should be as a people where tribes live together, dwelling with Yah, uh, where, you know, you have two trees and you it's obvious to you where Everything that is moral and righteous comes from the Bible. And everything that is in rebellion to God is all of the stuff that's uh, promoted by Hollywood. Vanity and materialism and uh, ego gaming and conflict and, and uh, just uh, put downs like the roast, celebrity roast where they just, it's like put downs, nonstop put downs. Okay, I got a red light. I promise I was going to read. That's the other part. I, if I touch buttons, all of a sudden, uh, scary screens come up, and I, I'm dry slow already because I'm pulling a trailer. I'm going. I'm riding out to go build an 18-foot pool in Northport. Uh, uh, Richard Davis was a pool guy for a little while. He came down, and um, so. We want this broadcast to be a, a broadcast of hope for everybody to come to the Feast of Tents in Tampa. <clears throat> because what has been done will be done. And by the way, you believers are Israelites. Jesus in red letters says in Matthew two time, I have not come except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So because of this false flag of all the evil stuff that Rothschild Israel does, this is identity theft. So many people go, well, look at all this evil stuff Israel is doing. Surely these are not. Um, <laughs> Richard Davis says, I love building pools. <laughs> 
I say, uh, Richard, I say, um, um, <laughs> I say to, to Paul all the time on our videos when we're driving, I go, dude, this is the best job you ever had. <laughs> I go, when's the last time you had a job where you can get stoned with your customers? He used to work at a bank too. Oh my God, I'm just remembering, uh, you guys have something in common because Richard Davis and Paul, they both, uh, uh, Paul was an underwriter at a bank and he was just like, uh, I met him through my kids. Uh, we both have kids that are the same age, uh, boys, like one year old and his is five and mine is four. And, um, so anyway, like, uh, last Sunday we all played football. Like I don't watch football, but we played football with flags and cones and, um, it was really fun because, uh, Paul and I will, we'll act really cartoonish and we'll do like a, a cartoon version of football, like blue 42 laces out, laces out. You know what I mean? Like just making fun of every movie and, and just being silly and the kids love it. They, they love it because it's silly time with the dads and they also get to run fast and, and have discipline and like we had a goal line stand and just like all this stuff and he's never seen football Christian has never watched football <laughs> so he's learning it all from daddy like so it's it's and from uh, and from Paul and from you know uh, uh, Ben because Ben gets all like he loves running and playing a tag and it's awesome so The Feast of Tents is a remembrance of when a unique group of people comprised of 12 tribes, including the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And Judah is unique. Jesus himself says, um, salvation is of the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. His mom was a Jew. Uh, his cousin, John the Baptist was a Jew. John the Baptist's father was a Jew, named Zechariah from the Old Testament. And at the altar of uh, incense, at the hour of incense, you can read this in Luke. This is in Luke. This is in the New Testament. His mom, John the Baptist's mom, was Elizabeth, and God spoke to her. The whole Bible is about the Israelites, the whole thing. We've been deceived, everybody. This is a, we've been, the, a, a, <clears throat> this has been a live action role play where we've been deceived that we are Americans. We've been brainwashed that we are uh, African Americans or European Americans or, uh, English, American, whatever, all of these false identities. And to recover from this identity theft, we have to, number one, live holy so we can represent. And that means to obey the Logos, right? The Word, the Word of God, the Logos, which is also called the Torah, the Word of God. And obviously you can get mired down in the details, but generally that means love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love other people with all your heart, soul, and mind, all your strength, right? And I, I'm terrible at that. I'm, I have a terrible bedside manner. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you, I'm working on it, right? Like, I, we have a swear jar at work, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a work in progress for certain. I'm not good at it. So the point is, is that this is an adventure where we are to grow and get better and uh, create mutual aid societies. We are to congregate. We're supposed to hang out with our brothers and our brother Israel, it's a, of all the 12 tribes, we are supposed to appear three times a year, all the men of Israel. And the reason being is we are supposed to organize Exodus. We are supposed to rehearse every uh, Passover. 
we are supposed to remove all of the leaven, all of the sin. And if we just obey Easter and uh, observe Easter, we remain in Roman polytheistic captivity. And the Israelites did something rare and, and very, very unique. And they, because they completely divorced, completely divorced all of the idols of Pharaoh. So not just Pharaoh, but all of the idolatry of Pharaoh, all of the false authority of Pharaoh. So that means they no longer paid Pharaoh's debts. They no longer listened to Pharaoh's laws. They no longer observed Pharaoh's holidays. They no longer went to Pharaoh's NFL football. They no longer observed Uncle Sam and Rothschild and Caesar and the money lenders and the Federal Reserve note and the Edomite imposters called uh, the synagogue of Satan and they're impersonating the Jews today, right? And through this identity theft, Jew has been uh, thought of as a very evil thing because the Bible itself, which is a Jewish civil, it's the history of an ongoing Jewish civil war. And by the way, this is, listen up, this is the ultimate down low on the JQ. The ultimate down low on the JQ is, is that the, the Bible is the history of an ongoing Jewish civil war. And uh, my brother Richard Davis, he calls the one faction of Jews the OJs. <laughs> and it always made, he said it and I laugh every time I say it. So I love him for telling me that. Uh, so it's the OJs. Now you have the, the Jews like Jesus, they're like, they're coming to keep Torah. In order to be sinless, sinless Messiah, you have to be the perfect example of obedience to it. So he was only violent with one group of people and that was the money lenders. Why? Because they're the head, they're the dragon, the, the biblical dragon. So this serpent from the garden, because it hasn't been challenged enough, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger like a termite infestation in your house. And that's what, when you look at the news and you look at the world and you look at all of this unbelievable traffic that I'm sitting in, it's because idolatry has run wild. And if you take out a dollar bill, for instance, and you look on the back of it, you'll see this uh, six pointed star, which is a symbol of the false Jews, the false Jews, right? I'm not making this up, right? You see that above the eagle? Right? If you look in there, that's a 666. That's a hex, a hexagram, right? A five is a pentagram, a seven is a septa, an eight is a, the octagon, right? So the real fight in this world is not in the octagon where men are trying to prove who's most dominant in all these various weight classes. On earth today, that is actually proven by modeling John the Baptist, Richard Davis, uh, Brett Jones. And let's all take a second to pray for Brett Jones who's suffering from some uh, uh, physical problems. And I'm, I'm hoping that he comes down um, for the Feast of Tents. Because I think, I would love to have a, a, a it, one of them, we did a, mark, a video about the markers of them that believe. And Jesus in red letters says that they will speak in tongues, they will lay hands and they can heal people. And I haven't done it in a, like an instant, uh, but I'm on the path to my own healing. Uh, my wife has healed our golden retriever. And I want to see that done uh, as a blessing to other people. Um, where we use Cannabis of Exodus as a tool for dissolving I idolatry. In other words, casting out demons. The demons of the infestation of the belief in the United States of America. The belief in, you know, that we should all be have our lives dominated by this idol right here.
this idol that has control over who we marry, who we divorce, why we divorce. Um, the biggest decisions that a human being makes, and if, if we're going to have children or not because we're in debt, uh, if you're trying to live like John the Baptist, you can't even get married because women aren't even interested in, in moral men that want to uh, walk with God. They hate that because, you know, if you're homeless and living on the edge like that, it's how, how do you have a child? Like, how do you pay for it? How do you pay for internet? Like, how do you, uh, you know, how do you have shelter? Everything is dominated by mon money in this Babylonian system. And Yah, Yah, the creator's, creator of the heavens and earth, he wants us back in the garden. Believe it or not, he wants to dwell with his people in the garden. I was afraid of that. Whenever I touch the camera while I'm recording, I have some episode like that. I apologize. But... These videos are often best not watched, <laughs> meaning listened to. It's really about the, the word and using Yah's word to edify the, 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 the people, to edify Israel, to edify Judah, to move closer to Torah and divorce Rothschild Israel, divorce Rothschild Israel. Uh, United States of America, the Talmudic, the Talmudic, humanistic, materialistic, uh, U.S. Constitution, um, all of these things are just pagan idols, right? And because we put our human energy into these things, I'm not sure, what, I'm in traffic now, so... The camera is just all time, all kinds of opposite right now. <laughs> it's all kinds of opposite. You hold it one way and it's vertical and I, I just, uh, that's what happens. I touch the screen and it all goes wrong. So I gotta, it's a mess. All right, so I'm just gonna try to position myself that it looks, I gotta like blow down in the seat and then this way. It's totally, totally bizarre. Okay, there I am. All right, so I'm in traffic. I'm approaching Fowler Avenue. I'm going by USF. I, had, I have a degree in history, by the way, from the University of South Florida. So I, at some certification level, am qualified to teach history, uh, but um, not in one of the Babylonian schools. But this history, this history of a people who complete, completely divorced Pharaoh, and by the way, the, uh, the American colonists did not do that. That's a very, very important lesson that the American colonists, when they divorced uh, uh, George, King George, they did not divorce Babylon. It's a very important uh, distinction because we think of revolutions that, okay, um, there's this revolution, all these people died. Like, think of the French Revolution, right? You had this revolution where you're one thing beforehand, you know, dominated by a bunch of plutocrats. And I agree, right? There were plutocrats. But the money power is always fi uh, financing both sides. So they financed the establishment, meaning King George, Right, England had already been taken over by the money power uh, when, you know, right around when the Jews were allowed back in uh, because the Jews had been conquered by the synagogue of Satan uh, 2,000 years prior to that, right? So it's essential that we look into the root cause evil of, of what has occurred and the scriptural uh, responsibility for Israel's conduct is laid down by Yah himself. He says, I, ch I put before you both blessings and curses, so choose life that you may live. Well, the Jews and the Christians 
whether they're atheistic or they're Torah observant, they say they're Torah observant, they're not willing to go deep enough. Okay, I can read some comments here. Uh, oh man, I can't read your comment. It's like sideways now and it's just, it's not a good time. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm in traffic just getting to Fowler. I started off late because we worked till we literally, we worked, I don't know, about two hours in the dark last night. We, we put down a, um, we're, I'm moonlighting doing other things than above ground pools. We built it above ground for this lady at 1530 and then uh, we built a deck next to it, uh, 10 by 10. Jim did some bang up nice, very nice. Jim is a great carpenter. Let me say right here and right now, Jim Callahan is a good carpenter because he does detail work that I would not like. And that's a, a mark of craftsmanship that you even know how to do that stuff because he'll do like rounded edges with a, uh, with a, a, a circular saw, a skill saw. <laughs> I, I'm not a skilled saw, like I'm straight cuts. So yesterday I was cutting pavers. We're doing a paver patio and I was doing straight cuts with a circular saw with a masonry bit. I had never done it with on a circular saw. Like uh, I used to have like, you know, uh, I used to do in-ground pools. So I had a big uh, steel concrete saw, um, 18 inch blade, like a big monster $500 saw. Um, so anyway, my point is, is that these men that, that Yah has blessed me to work with, Richard Davis, uh, Jim Callahan, and uh, Paul, I don't know if he wants his last name out there, um, so, <laughs> but, but uh, I've just been so blessed, like, because uh, I, I also have had this year, like I worked with a couple teenagers, 18 year old, a 20 year old, my nephew, um, um, older guys uh, that have been on the videos, like work with Mike. You guys know pool guy Mike, right? He stopped by the other night. Um, but it's not everybody that you can work with because there are uh, character issues when you're working that. It's, it's like, man, you get angry. Like, and you just, you can get, because we're in captivity. We're, we're just making bricks for Pharaoh. So when you work with people, you can kind of see uh, what, um, what you have bubbling under the surface that's trying to be put down because like, I don't curse all the time, but when I get aggravated and angry and then, then it's just like, ah, you know what I mean? That rage moment. And it just shows uh, how you're not under control and how you can get frustrated and the biblical walk is to try to keep that all down under uh, the surface. Let me see if I can read you, Rick. I love building pools. It is a sweet gig. Down with the banks. Down with the banks. Yep. Um, sorry, I I, uh, I needed some time. Man, I got some comments. Hey, I love it when you guys comment. I, I want... I want all of you guys to friend each other. Friend each other. All of you guys that are on there, please uh, do that. And let's start organizing and gathering the, tr the tribes. Let's smoke the peace pipe. Let's meet at the Feast of Tents. Uh, and wherever you guys are, right? So you guys meet up. You guys, if you know, if you're in different parts of the country, and then let's just do a, like a live stream event together where we do like a shout out to um, the different uh, tribes. You know what I mean? Like, with, like, just like we're doing this, like it won't be like we're driving. So um, let's set a night, maybe October the 19th. And Paul and I are going to do something with our kids. We're, we're going to tent camp. Um, we're going to have a campfire. We're going to... Uh, um, we're going to tell stories. We're going to read the Bible. We're going to talk. We're going to sing songs, right? And like, 
there's a, a song on the top of my one of one of the songs is only a boy named David only a little sling only a boy named David but he could pray and sing right only a boy named David only a little brook right <laughs> so we're gonna sing these songs and the kids love it they love it they love it but when I go to church like I don't feel it like I don't they're not slaying dragons and I want to teach our boys to slay dragons they are dra they are engineered by our Creator to be dragon slayers right so when when Yah says uh, the Israelites are my chosen people it's because those people have chosen to have the set apart spirit to divorce as much as they can and we're you know it's hard you know and I'm obviously servant I'm not doing it nearly as much as I should I want to start growing our own food and that's part of we need to regather and then what will happen is some guys that know how to grow but they don't have land and then there'll be other guys like me I have land but I don't know how to grow I don't have the patience for it it's something a skill like I'm, I'm not good at it like music like I I wish I knew how to play the guitar but I can only play this three string so I'm just gonna use what I can do and that's why we are to be to be a community like the Amish and be more and more grow into our self-sufficiency and like the Amish we should uh, learn to be biblical judges so that we can self judge that we can have our own judicial system so that we can have our own economic system just like the Exodus Israelites did and that takes a lot of work when Moses came down uh, from the burning bush to say hey it's time to go people they had to immediately organize a military evacuation right it was urgent like it, it it was quick exodus is less than a year we go from being slaves and all of this babylonian captivity that we see right now all of this babylonian captivity you wake up every day you go to work you do nine to five everything's focused on uh the dollar paying bills sweating money worried about bankruptcy uh worried about you know am i gonna die alone um, with no one to love me because I have these very strong religious beliefs and I'm going broke and uh, I, I just want to serve God but in the meantime how how can we do all of these things how can we survive in Babylon and serve God at the same time and meantime we're we're all borrowers who are servants to the money lenders we're all debt slaves we're all bond servants it's our collective efforts our labor and our faith and belief and in this satanic idol this satanic idol including you know gold and silver if they replaced it with gold and silver which is controlled by the Rothschilds also right so we have to put all of our faith, even to live without money, period, and basically tithe with our labor and our products, our flocks and our herds and our um, oil, right? That's all in Deuteronomy, right? Where we can just... Uh, so what what is the goal ultimately what is the goal what is the goal the goal is to get to back to the garden the goal is the kingdom of heaven on earth that we have an earthly reward and a heavenly reward that's how great our God is right if yours is the one that he only hooks you up after you're dead I want to tell you some good news about this this whole other God where he uh, says forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors in the Lord's Prayer 
and he has a parable about uh, f forgiving seven times 70 or 70 times. I forget how that one goes. But anyway, cancel the debt is my point. Uh, at the Feast of Tents every seven years, we need to rehearse. How do you cancel debt? How will my mom get social... If we cancel the debt, how does my mom get social security? Well, the answer to that is she's not really looking for social security. She's looking for money. When she's not really looking for money, she's looking to be to be able to pay her bills. Well, she's not really caring about paying her bills anymore. Nobody really looks forward to paying their bills every month. She's just looking forward that she has heat and shelter and uh, can see the grandkids. That's what she really wants. She just wants shelter and she wants to be able to buy things for the grandkids. And um, she doesn't really want that. She just really wants to be with her grandkids. She doesn't want to just buy him stuff. She wants to be remembered and loved. And actually, she doesn't want to be put in a nursing home. She wants to be with her family. Well, guess what? We can do all of that without money. We can love out, like really love our family and show it in the way where we invite them to dwell with us. And when we invite our family to dwell with us, in our local communities and in our own houses, we invite God to dwell with us by taking, uh, because we all have all of these skills that we can help the local widows and our orphans, and they don't need money either. <clears throat> they need flocks and herds and oils and corn. They need food and shelter and, uh, love and belonging. That's what we need more than all of that stuff is not dependent on money, right? So we need a money a system that serves Yah's kingdom. <clears throat> and Yah's kingdom is not dependent upon money. That idol must be defeated. That's part of the growth, right? We must di divorce all of the idols that we've been brainwashed to serve and obey and fear, right? Think of all the fear that surrounds money. You know, how do you pay your taxes, right? If you just cancel the debt, what happens? Don't they seize your house, right? If you stop paying your taxes, right? Richard Davis, Jim Callahan, and I, we don't pay income taxes, right? I've been doing this. I've been doing a video for three, four, for 10 years now talking about not paying taxes <laughs> and other than for the the, the saving uh, grace of Yah who's equipping me to be a me his messenger to, to talk to his people to say hey regather for Exodus and the, the biggest challenge of Exodus is mental the biggest challenge is that you have to be willing to divorce Pharaoh entirely the same way that the righteous Israelites did and that's why their name including the Jews they became the bride and that's a purification process that's necessary for everyone to go through every every it's not just for the Jews to go through because we're all in captivity we're all debt slaves in Egyptian captivity that's why there's a an Egyptian pyramid an Egyptian obelisk even in uh, the Israel's Knesset, right? They're Babylonian. They've been conquered by Babylon also, right? The synagogue of Satan is Babylon. That's, that's who's put the captivity on us. So the discernment comes down is who, what's the JQ? The JQ is judge them by their fruits. Who is Cinderella? Who marries the prince? Right? Is sin who marries the prince? Is it is it the, the stepwives, the stepsisters rather? <clears throat> who does the shoe fit? The shoe fits those that obey. And because they obeyed the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the house of Benjamin, right? All 
all of the uh, Manasseh, right? I missed a bunch of Dan, uh, Dan. So, regardless of which tribe that you come from, <clears throat> the house of Judah is righteous when Yah married it because at that time they became a righteous bride that promised to obey and for a little while they did it was you know they didn't go into captivity immediately <clears throat> Babylon didn't take them over immediately it took a little while and for a little while in cycles they did obey when they had judges who were willing and they had the courage to judge when Yah says, I will send a deliverer. And these deliverers came in the form of judges. And those judges were willing to chasten Israel. And Israel was beautiful and righteous, a, a, a beautiful bride, an ob obedient wife. When rather the, the wife didn't go, oh no, I'm going my, you know, God knows my heart. No, she was willing to be chastened. As most women are un, not willing to be chastened. So I'm trying to establish why Judah and Israel are unique. They were willing to cover up. They were, Judah and Israel was willing to stop being so materialistic and just uh, coveting the next gadget or gizmo or the thing on the to-do list, right? And be a Proverbs 31 bride. To more than anything, fear Yah and keep His commandments. How can I serve Yah? How can I be humble? How can I uh, visit prisoners to be selfless, to heal? To heal other people, to, uh, to heal uh, other human beings. All right, we all got to grow. We all, um, and that's what's unique about the Jews of the biblical Exodus and the Israelites of the biblical Exodus and in Judges. And for a long time after that, they were not dominated by the money power. They did not allow usury within their territories. They did not allow, they canceled debts every seven years. They did, they, they did have jubilees. They, Nehemiah, a righteous Jew, in Nehemiah 5, he, that's the history of a, a successful Jewish debt revolt. It was su successful. They repatriated land which was stolen through usury and uh, uh, money manipulations because they would not be, they refused to be ruled by the money power. That's why. So if you, once you yourselves and whoever, you know, if you're pagan or whatever, you know, if you think Hitler was awesome or something, Hitler did not end debt slavery. Hitler did not abolish usury. The Jews did though, right? But Hitler under the marketing that the Jews are evil, because at the time they were manipulating things and controlled the banks and all that, right? So you can see all of these layers of deception and twisting and, uh, um, you know, that's why the synagogue of Satan put Hitler on the synagogue of Satan Satan put Hitler on the time and made him Time Magazine Man of the Year. Right? The road's really narrow here, it really annoys me, man. It's just a bummer. Driving on Fowler and the, I'm really wide. So I take up I, the sun's in my face and I gotta watch the lanes. So <clears throat> I want you to think of this. This is a, a big truth from why doesn't once the Jews, the, 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 the Jews or the Israelites so-called today, when you put Nehemiah on your money or you, you, you make a movie, movie about a Nehemiah 5 debt revolt, 
how usury was abolished, how all of the usury was returned, all of the debt was canceled, and all of the land was repatriated, then I will believe that you're not dominated and you're not just a front for the money lenders. When you talk about that, when you talk about creating a society where money is unnecessary, then I will, you know, and you, you know, you, what you do is you market that under communism and you have to reject Yah, right? So that's how these guys are always conflating things and, and mixing, mixing in some leaven with biblical ideas. They're, they're always scheming. You know, there's always scheming and it's sad. Um, because what we want is righteous completely. Like, why isn't, why doesn't Ben Shapiro ever talk about usury just being, or capitalism being a front for the money lenders? Just the scheme of mammon, right? Jews are commanded to uh, divorce mammon, right? Ben Shapiro will say that he is Torah obedient, right? Well, he, you can't do that. You can't be a Zionist <laughs> then because they are secular. The U.S. Constitution is secular. You can't be a Christian and be a constitutionalist at the same time, right? That's all idolatry. That's all conflation. That's all ball worship. Yah wasn't promoting voting. Adam and Eve and the serpent were voters. <laughs> so if the goal is to get back into the garden and, and stop the rebellion and stop consuming from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's our requirement. Well, for a little while, the Jews and the Israelites only uh, consumed from the tree of life. So that is our calling. That is our own challenge today, is to do the same thing, to live up. Like, rather than just going, oh, look, every the Jews are, they're evil, they're behind all this stuff, and they are. But it's to, to unmask the Jews and realize, like the Bible says twice in Revelation, and says, they say they're Jews, but they're not. They're the synagogue of Satan. So... Because of this false flag, many have been brainwashed to believe, you know, and, and if, you, if you talk about this stuff on Facebook, you get censored. So your natural reaction through rage, um, wrath, is that like, it's like, ah, oh, you want to get back. You want to uh, look what these Jews, they're promoting race mixing. They're promoting um, the Kalergi plan. They're promoting mass immigration, and they are. They, I agree with all this stuff. However, underneath all of those, under their, their self-proclamation that they are the biblical Jews, a significant portion of them are atheists, communists. Like right? they're, the, they're the ones that slaughtered millions of believers. Like I, I know all of this stuff. However, their identity was conquered and stolen around 500 BC, 500, when they went into Babylonian captivity, they came back with seeds of the Babylonian Talmud, the Talmud. So over time, this infection conquered the Jews. It conquered the house of Israel prior to that because the house of Israel actually went into captivity first. And they went into Assyrian captivity. And then they got dispersed through the world. So when Jesus says, I have not come for the lost sheep except for, I've come only for, the only group that I'm looking for, he being a Jew, I'm looking for the lost sheep of the house of Israel because he's the good shepherd willing to lay down his life to protect the sheep, right? Jim Callahan is that type of guy. Richard Davis is that type of guy. Paul is that type of guy because they're willing to go endure. Like they don't want that. 
when you walk this walk, you get cut off from jobs. You get cut off from employment opportunities. Because if you're preaching the gospel, you're, part of the gospel is repentance. And it's part of its prophecy is like, hey, look how you're being deceived. You see the story? Do you see how you believers are the actual Israelites? The believers are the Israelites. You've been the victim of identity theft. Some of you are the actual Jews. You know, I don't, I don't know how to identify them, but I think a good way is that in this time of, of uh, captivity, the Old Testament says, or well, the New Testament first says, salvation is of the Jews, one. Most of the apostles, if not all, were Jews. I, I, I can't remember that, but it's a lot. It's the majority. The church father, John the Baptist, they were willing to lay down their lives as good shepherds. That's how you can discern the good shepherds from the hirelings. Under, witness, witness the economic aspect. Hirelings, it's economic. The warfare, the control scheme is economic. They get you to prostitute yourself in the very same way that I'm prostituting myself today to go work for Pharaoh, right? However, through, through monetary reform, we can break their back. We have 7 billion debt slaves. There's 3 billion uh, so-called believers. They say they're believers. There's a bunch of Jews that want to be free of the money power. There's a bunch of atheists that want to be free of the money power. There's a bunch of Christians that want to be free of the money power and just live with their families where their, their families aren't all separated and um, where you live more like the Amish, where you work with your hands, you raise barns, you create mutual aid societies, the grandparents aren't warehoused in uh, senior living facilities, the children are raised by the extended family that are believers and believe that only God creates law. Right? Right? That's how it was done a hundred years ago and you had a far, far more moral society then. A far more uh, growing, less divorce, less infanticide, less hedonism, less terrible music. Oh man, the, you turn the radio on, the music is just terrible. <coughs> Repetitive, just painful. It's painful to listen to. Just like the stuff I do. <laughs> However, Bob Morley did it well and we have a soundtrack for Exodus. So Feast of Tents, everybody. So. I wish I could read the comments. I, I, I'm driving and the traffic is starting to open up. I just passed I-4, I'm meeting Jim. So I still have another like 40 minutes, right? So I'm totally down to preach if you guys are listening. I have three and I wish there was a way I could see what you guys wanted to talk about because that's a, this is a good opportunity to do that. Uh, the lanes are wider so I can kind of relax and uh, it's just, it's difficult in some spots and heavy traffic and the lanes are really narrow. Uh, I got cars, it's like bumper cars, nearly. Um, I'm driving a dually with a, a tandem trailer with a tractor on it, with no AC. Um, my AC works intermittently, that's a bummer. Okay, so sometimes when you hear the, a lot of road noise, there's always a lot of road noise with this. So I'm like leaning way forward like a, a geriatric, uh, but I want you to be able to hear and I see that there is four of us. And the, the vision that Paul and I were laughing is like over time what will happen with our live streams is that um, for about a, a month now, 
we've been doing a uh, morning session and because we've been trying to figure out uh, in the Bible it positively says the hour of incense is at the third hour and the ninth hour but our clocks and our calendars have been so uh, messed up so when it's the third hour like does that mean in Jerusalem or or Greenwich England or like what where is that where do you base the third and the ninth hour from is it dawn locally um, so all of this stuff is uh, confusing uh, maybe we're supposed to get up like dawn is supposed to be four you know for, for farmers it's like 4 a.m. like when I was in boot camp every morning you actually got up at 4 like you're eating at 5 you you were running you had already eating and you were running and the Sun was coming up hoorah um, so all that's good like wh whatever it is and our experiments our uh, research our witness is that it might be earlier um, and the reason why we want to know that is that in the second and third acts the big events surrounding the the third and the ninth hour um, there was a healing which occurred and I really uh, I'm, I'm called because I, I want to try to do a healing of someone and we just need a volunteer, and I'm hoping that it's Brett Jones. Like it's somebody that's really afflicted with uh, uh, something serious, very serious. Like because I, I I didn't take action early enough with Tommy Kennedy. I was just at the time I was I was writing books about the healing power of cannabis, but I never I never anointed Tommy Kennedy. I was. It was really late, and I was like sending him messages. Like, I knew that he was uh, using cannabis oil on. He had like a, a, a tumor on his neck or jaw, um, and he was trying to do a witness where he was um, he was showing pictures of the cancer's growth, and uh, but he also did chemo. So it was kind of like a mixed bag kind of thing. Well, my point is, is that um, I would like to do that with Brett Jones for the Feast of Tents. And we'd like as many believers to be around as possible uh, to see, like in the same way, at, at the hour of incense, um, uh, Peter laid hands on a paralyzed or a man that couldn't walk at the hour of incense, the ninth hour at the temple. In the, It's in Acts 3, I believe. So my point is, is that we want to kind of, uh, what, as it's, um, what has been done will be done. There's nothing new under the sun. We want to kind of recreate and uh, what's is it? Paul says, follow me perfectly as I attempt to follow Jesus. Like, try to model the stuff that I was doing. And Paul was going into the synagogues, and he was obeying the biblical Sabbath, uh, Saturday, and the, after the cross, like after the tree. Jesus was nailed to a tree because that's the, uh, the Jewish form of punishment. So they were following Torah, but they were pretending to, just like they pretend to today. Um, so, in order for us to have a, a more uh, close walk, a more narrow walk, a more powerful, for Yah to empower us more and more and more, we need to walk closer and closer to Him. And so they were regathering. They were walking and they were going out in pairs. They were, uh, they were obeying the New Testament commands of, um, 
of going out in pairs. But it's something that they were doing in the Old Testament in um, the witness of Moses and Abraham. Or Elijah and Isaiah. Elias. Right? Um, so there's biblical witnesses for uh, going out in pairs because wherever two or three ga are gathered in my name, I will be with you, right? So we can put on, um, we could put Babylon on, tri on trial. We can post the law, and then if anybody challenges the law, we can challenge them. And that's something that uh, we were uh, doing a little bit with when Henry Garman uh, visited Breckenridge for the Feast of Tents. So I'm trying to say, like, this is stuff that we've done already in little amounts. We need to do it more for certain. Um, and I'm eager to do that. Like, I, I'm totally willing to speak to sheriffs and police and other alleged law enforcement that... Um, or other like professed Jews. Like if you're a Jew, hey, I love you, brother Jew. I don't hate you. Did you know that your the the identity of the biblical Jews is being stolen right now, and with in that name, evil atrocities are being committed, and that there's uh, pagan idols that are in even in, like the highest law authority, the Israelite Knesset, has an Egyptian pyramid. And an, and an Egyptian obelisk inside of it. Did you know, Brother Chu, that that the identity of Christians and Jews has been stolen? Right? There's all of this uh, identity theft going on. The sun's coming up, and the 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 truck is like an RV. It's getting hotter. It's getting sticky now. My hands hurt from yesterday's pool. But it's all good, right? We're going to win. And I just want to make sure it happens. Babylon falls in an hour. And I want it to happen before my son, uh, before I die. So that, you know, we, we clean up the temple. We need to cleanse the temple, which is the whole earth. Um, return to the garden. I want that done. So that Yah dwells uh, as a pillar of fire, column of smoke. My kids can see it. Hey, Yah's right there. Awesome. Where are we going today, Yah? It's going to be an adventure. Let's go. Hey, there's giants in the land. Awesome. I can't wait to see how how Yah messes up the giants. And the giants go, the giants go like this. If Israel, <laughs> Israel, choose yourself a champion. And if he is able to defeat our champion, we will serve you. But if we defeat your champion, you will serve us as debt slaves. <laughs> but the men of Israel were afraid because Goliath was too large. Goliath was too frightening. He could carry spears that like 10 men could not carry. He could carry a shield that five men could not even touch. All the men of Israel were afraid. But then a boy stepped forward because he had a good heart. He was anointed. Only a boy named David. And Samuel anointed David in the midst of his brothers. And from that day forward, from that day forward, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And when the Spirit of the Lord falls upon you, you can speak in new tongues. Come, we go chant down Babylon one more time. Come, we go chant down Babylon one more time. Oh, them soft, them soft, them soft, they're soft. 
Babylon is soft. Because these giants are only grasshoppers when you have anointed eyes of our king. To our king, he looks down and they're all grasshoppers. Chariots of Pharaoh are not a threat. Because as soon as his bride Israel and Judah repent, then Yah himself will take care of the IRS, Uncle Sam, Rothschild, the Federal Reserve. All we gotta do is obey our King and Creator, right? See how all of this is connected? And if you're taught to hate Israel, and you're taught to hate the Jews, then you'll, you will be manipulated You'll be manipulated to hate the Old Testament. You'll be manipulated to hate uh, the Exodus story. You'll be manipulated uh, to follow the Torah. And you'll follow the US Constitution instead, right? Or um, the Pope, right? Or the Sanhedrin, or the Talmud, or some, you know, the NFL, or whatever, whatever thing that you fear, that we all fear. Whatever we fear, we obey. Whatever we obey becomes our God, right? So that's what was unique about the tribes of Israel and the tribe of Judah the 12 tribes, all of them, they overcame their fear. That was the biggest challenge. They stopped fearing the IRS. They stopped fearing Pharaoh. They stopped fearing Pharaoh's chariots. They stopped fearing being homeless. They stopped fearing uh, not having cars. They stopped fearing living in tents. They were, they, they said, hey, let's go live in a tent. Like, we're going to make this a, a, a yearly practice. We, we want to live with Yah so much that we are willing to live in tents voluntarily. We are, we are a bride. Imagine a bride that you can meet. Imagine your own wife was, Lord, Lord, have I offended you? I only want to do the things that you want. I want to be that kind of bride. I don't want to like say, oh, like you're quitting football. Yes, the command is to quit football. We are, there will no longer be foot, football in this household. She'll do it, and she'll make it so that nobody else will watch football in your household. For for an example, I'm not. I don't want to get stuck in any like this isn't a, a big issue. But, but these are these are all of the things that we have to do collectively. And that, like, swearing, I want to, like, do my own sins. Right? Swearing. I swear. And, um, what are my own sins? Like, just, like, something that I have a, like, I'm, I'm going to work for Pharaoh right now. This is my own sin. My own sin. I am guilty. Lots of traffic at Apollo Beach. Like, it's like I-4 now. Actually, the traffic at I-4 was less, <laughs> in this instance, it was less than I-4 right now. Um, uh, man, it's getting hot in here. I'm sweating. All right, I'm going to sacrifice. I want to put the windows down. My carnal self, my carnal me, right? So Yah is always testing us. Yah is always pushing us. He's always trying to purify us. Stop cursing so much. Stop being so uh, selfish. Right? Like, I'll do that because I'm, he, like, when I come home, like, I'm around the kids, I'm so used to feeding myself first. Whereas moms, they always feed the kids first. And I have to train, like, I have to consciously think because it's a new habit. And that's all this is. The whole thing, everything. Everything that we are challenged by comes down to new habits. A new habit of, of observing 
the seven feasts instead of observing um, the Babylonian holidays like Halloween. Why does that matter? Right? Why does that matter? Because if you observe the biblical feasts instead of Easter, you have Passover. Right? Instead of, you have Passover. And why do you want to have Passover? Because at Passover you have Exodus. Now you understand why Feast of Tents is important. Now you want, even within the Christian tradition, <clears throat> Jesus says, sell all your stuff. Like, be mobile. Be willing to not be owned by all of your stuff. Right? The rich man had to give up all of his stuff to get, uh, to get into the kingdom. And that's why, like, as a pilgrimage, Christians... They used to uh, they used to go to Jerusalem, or they would. There's something current like called the. There's a movie called The Way, with Emilia Estevez and uh, uh, Charlie uh, Martin Sheen, where they they walk on the uh, the Camino, the road, the Camino de Santiago, Camino de Santiago, right? So the idea is, you give up. All of the, just you just take with you all that just what you can carry on your pack. Like Paul and I talk about this, <coughs> that we want to do this. We want to do this with our families when the kids are a little bit more mobile, so you don't need a stroller. They can walk. They can endure the hike. And you go and dwell with other believers who have set up their houses where they invite fellow believers into their and you like share music and food and stories. And uh, agape, agape, agape love. So in that same way, we can do that at my house. And we want to open up that agape love at the Feast of Tents and have music and campfire and songs and tents and all of that. All of that. We like my own fit, like to hang out to sing songs with, with my children, like just, like a wedding, like a wedding where his people completely divorce all of the idols of Babylon, all of them. And cannabis is the, is a blessing where it helps to dissolve the idolatry the idolatry leads to fear. The, the fear leads to obedience to this false god. And that's that's what's that's all that that's the basis for the affliction on humanity. Because as soon as we uh, have the the righteous king rule, and we set up judges of tens and fifties and hundreds and thousands, as soon as we have those local organic clans which um, are, it, it requires that, you know, just like the Amish, right? The Amish aren't these wild banshees just fighting nonstop and, right? I guess they're doing it without cannabis. So, hey, I know, like, I, they, the, the, I, I would say they were subject to a significantly less degree of idolatry. You know, I was watching Animal House. The average Amish person has never seen it. And I think of all of the uh, destruction that watching Animal House has led to in my own life, right? And it's a lot, a whole lot, <laughs> right? Um, you know, just, so, so we're, we're programmed to be in rebellion from Yah from birth. That's what all of the anthems and pledges and flags and all of that, uh, all the movies and uh, cowboys versus Indians, and from the halls of Montezuma. That's what that all is about. All of that is to uh, impregnate you with idolatry so that you're willing to go sacrifice on behalf of idols. And idols are wooden gods. They're paper gods. They're paper tigers. They don't really have power except 
they don't have power outside of the human beings which choose to uh, energize them. Whereas Yah is unique because he doesn't need human beings. He's, he's a power unto himself. He's, what, he's the authority which blew life. He gave the breath of life into humans. We are just dead bones without him. That's why Earth is, is basically largely occupied by dead bones. It's a zombie apocalypse right now. Um, inhabited, uh, Earth is just inhabited by Canaanites. The Western world, particularly. It's just inhabited by Canaanite baby killers. Um, willing to go to war whenever their idols, their flag is threatened, their, their idolatry. Meanwhile, the whole thing is being invaded. <laughs> so the police and the military aren't stopping the, the, you know, basically Babylon is using immigration and as a weapon to, to balkanize societies, right? It's not normal um, for all these tribes to be forced to live together. We're, we are different, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. And there, there's beautiful Mexican people, beautiful African people, beautiful... They're Americans. They are the true Americans. I'm European. Um, so, where are we at? Bradenton, 25 miles. He's like, I'm going to go another 10 minutes, right? So I got to GPS it up to meet Jim. He's on standby. Thank you for being patient, Jim. I'm driving uh, 55. what's going on. I, I, I like to drive slow, even when I'm not on uh, doing videos live. Um, it's just a good number, because the roads are under construction, and people just drive crazy, and I get a lot of blowouts. I get a lot of blowouts. Uh, so, the title of the video is, Why is Judah and Why is Israel? Why are they chosen? Because they, Yah gave them an assignment to be unique in all of world history. You know, people will debate that, but to be an example, an example of a group of people who overcame their fear, right? We're overcomers, the Israelites, New and Old Testament. They over their, overcame their fear of Caesar and says, I don't care, I'm going to obey anyway, and they're going to martyr me. They're going to kill me. Because that's what they did it to my, my king, my creator, Messiah. And I consider it an honor if they kill me. I consider it an honor, kill me. Because as I walk like that, you kill me, and I inspire ten. You can't stop this out because what Yah has ordained when his bride comes walking toward him, when she turns, when she uh, uh, releases her stiffened neck, right? Yah's dealing with a bride right now who's whoring. Yah has a bride because of idolatry. Th she thinks that she is the cat's meow. She thinks she's totally a believer. She thinks that um, she's totally submissive, but she's not. She's, she's not willing to audit her beliefs. She's not willing to uh, question. She's just going to church over and over, just like they were doing during Jesus' time. She, the, the money power had taken over. Obviously, everything is controlled by the bankers. Obviously, uh, money has a unique level of control. And we fear the IRS more than we fear God. We fear the police state. We fear the SWAT teams. We fear the DEA. We fear all of those agent, the alphabet agencies. We fear those things more than we generally. We fear those things. 
And then we also fear those who get busted because they get busted and now they're going to jail. Well, the, the walk of Paul shows that he wasn't afraid to go to jail. He went to jail over and over and over again. Well, those men are the mindset which is necessary because they purified their minds. They made the commitment, I walk this walk, I'm willing to exodus, even if you kill me, even if your chariots are more mighty and I don't have one, I don't care, kill me if you can. And then over time, Yah empowers enough of us that the true Judah and the true Israel will stand up, she'll become anointed, she'll no longer be paralyzed with fear. She'll stand up, the men will lower her from the ceiling, she will, but, and, and Yah will anoint her, and Yah protects his anointed, and she's going to walk again. And when this prodigal son walks again, it is game over, because this, that group of people they will be, uh, Deuteronomy 28, blessed. They will lend to many nations. They will be a blessing to many nations. They will, uh, they will be blessed. You know, it gets into all of the, the kingdom blessings um, where the lion and the lamb lay down together, the, uh, the leopard eats straw, like that kind of stuff. Uh, carnism is ended. Um, you beat the swords into plowshares. So if you really love peace, it's not through ending the Federal Reserve or whatever. However, the Federal Reserve will end, right? You got to do more than just end the Federal Reserve. So, all right, I'm, I'm almost to my exit. So what has happened on earth, there, there's been a, an incident, a crime of identity theft. And, and sadly, when you go to church, they never talk about this. And it's very, very plain to see that this identity theft of the biblical Jews and the biblical Israelites has occurred. So there's a, an old children's story uh, called Cinderella. Disney took over it, but it's it's actually an allegory of the Bible, because the Bible, these stories from 200 years ago by the Brothers Grimm, these fairy tales, they were all allegories, or they were largely, they're folk tales, and the folk tales of folk meaning people, these are the, the, the folk tales that around a campfire these were spoken. And that story is like the, the, the adults would say this to the children. There's this princess, Israel. She's going to marry a prince. But there's all of these other women. Everybody's looking on. The whole town is looking on. Like, who is this prince going to marry? And they look at, and who is Israel? And they're looking and they see a, this fine household. They're very rich. And they have the proper genealogy. They were born of the right families, right? They they have a prestigious house. Like, they don't even do housework anymore. Um, they have this stepsister that does it all, right? And so the, the elder sisters, like, they had the right clothes. They went to all the right churches. They went to the right synagogues. Um, like just like 2,000 years ago, Jesus would talk about the scribes and the Pharisees, right? They, it was all for show. So, however, everybody thought because that they were putting on this show, hypocrites is a type of actor, right? They were putting on this big show, but everybody believed that they were the Jews. They were the Israelites. In the meantime, Jesus, John the Baptist, Mary, uh, all of them, they were all Jews, the apostles. So you have Jews persecuting Jews. So obviously there's two factions of Jews, the Bible being the history of an ongoing, real world, even today, Jewish civil war. It's, it's ongoing today. So if you think of the Lion King movie, 
If you understood these simple lessons, you would understand why there's so much division on Earth. It's the Lion King. Scar is sitting on Simba's throne. All right? So the Lion of the tribe of Judah, he obviously, Jesus is king, and he's the creator Messiah. Well, he was, he, what most Christians are waiting to happen is for him to come back and do all the heavy lifting. For him to end all of this evil. For us to be raptured, that we don't even have to do the work. When the reality is the biblical witness of the apostles, they weren't saying, in fact, they were told, um, you will not die until, some of you here will not die until you see the kingdom of heaven come with power. They got to experience the kingdom of heaven with power when they observed Pentecost, which is an Old Testament feast. The apostles were observing the Old Testament. They weren't doing Hollywood, ha Halloween. They weren't doing Easter. They weren't doing um, Christmas. By the way, Jesus was most likely born at the Feast of Tents, which we are going to observe, and we're going to have the, uh, the boys, like Paul and I, we're, we're going to ha have a camping night where the boys camp, and we're going to tell campfire stories, and we're going to sing songs, and uh, we're going to dress up like David and Goliath. Like, we're, like we're going to live the Bible, and we're going to say, like, what? why did they... Why did they go into tents? Because the Jews and the Israelites are unique throughout history because they were, they were willing to divorce their fear of the government, of Uncle Sam, of Pharaoh, of Caesar, of the IRS, of the power of the Federal Reserve Note, this idol which rules our lives called the Federal Reserve Note which is owned by a private company, right? All this fear over money and conflict over money and um, divorces and breakups and, you know, people decide who they marry, who they're going to divorce, what kind of job they're going to take, if, if they're going to work, if they're not going to work. All of these sacrifices that, that human beings make for a dollar, right? And for sex, right? How many girls, sadly, are going to have sex or they're going to marry for money, right? That's one of the first things a Christian father says, like if uh, for a suitor, well, what does your boy do, right? Does he have a lot of Federal Reserve notes? As if that qualifies him to be married. <laughs> Think of how much evil that has caused. Right, you marry a rich guy, the guy that has money. Like when I, I had two divorces because I, I had money that I could afford uh, um, being adulterous and chasing, having extramarital af affairs. Right, so certainly money should not be any sort of qualification, but money dominates. And the, this group, the Jews and the Israelites, are unique through history because their law, their law requires debt cancellation every seven years at the Feast of Tents. Show me a scripture from another religion where in the Lord's Prayer it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors by the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Some of you, you might call him Simba or Mustafa. Because when he's on the throne, when we cancel the debt, because this is a righteous king who loves his people, when we love this king, he cancels our debt. He cancels, and we have usury abolition. We don't even need money. We can live in tents. Um, we can innovate. We can be like the Amish. We can use uh, technology as a, uh, a benefit rather than a tool of captivity. So that's all I got. I got a GPS uh, gym where his location is. We're going to rendezvous. Uh, I'm not working with Paul today for a day. He's got uh, kids. And um, uh, so we'll be back with Paul tomorrow. Uh, later. <laughs>